been involved in paying the rent for more than two months. However, that was not how we agreed. If she doesn't give me next month's rent, I'm going to kick her out of my house. I think she's the one coming. Good day to you. Oh good. That's all you have to say to me. There is something more to say. When are you going to pay me the money you owe me? Don't worry, I'll give you all your money back. Sooner or later. You should know that my patience has limits. That's what you're telling me. I am tired of this sentence that you repeat to me all the time. I'm giving you a few more weeks to pay me back the full amount you owe me. If not, you will leave my house. Don't say that. I'm going to give you all your money back in a few days. I certainly hope so. Well, I'm off to work tonight. Goodbye. I would like to know why my life is not progressing. However, I am a Christian. This girl had just threatened to deport me, but I would not like to be homeless anymore. What am I going to do to get out of this precarious situation? Well, I have to hurry up because I don't want to be late for work. Get in. Hello, boss. Good morning. Do you have a problem? No. Today is my last day of work because my contract has come to an end. So I would like to know if you still need me. No, we won't need you anymore. Okay, boss. You can go. Hello, colleagues. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Are you okay? But why are you have this face? What do you have? I am sad because I could no longer work on this site. Oh good. Why? The boss had just told me that I would be posted to another site starting tomorrow. Besides, I would not like to leave this place. Wasn't your contract coming to an end? Yes. However, I have been extended. Oh good. Yes. Well, I'm going to leave you because I don't want the boss to come see us talking. Okay, that works. Today, the contract that I signed with this company will end. I really don't know what to do anymore. However, I had prayed a lot in recent weeks so that God could touch the heart of my employer so that he could extend the contract that I had signed. But night, nothing is done. God, what did I do to make you stop listening to me? I am tired of the life I am living. My colleague, who is not even a Christian like me, has been extended. I am disgusted with life. I am really starting to get sick of all the difficulties I encounter on a daily basis. I'm going to take a short break. I don't know what my colleague has today. Since I arrived, I had noticed that she was just talking to herself. I'm going to approach her anyway to ask for a bit more details about what's happening to her. How are you, colleague? Excuse me for meddling in things that don't concern me. What do you really have? I noticed that you haven't stopped talking to yourself lately. What do you know? My life is not changing. However, I gave my heart to Jesus. I wonder if God knows me. I don't have freedom. I fail every time I do anything. My life is not succeeding. I am rejected by those around me. Soon, I will no longer have a job because my contract has come to an end. When I pray, my prayers are not answered. I live by myself. I feel like I'm going to go crazy. I am disgusted with life. I don't know what to do anymore. A Christian woman does not speak like that. Let me tell you that success and freedom are subject to putting God's word into practice. It is true that you are a Christian. However, your success, your freedom, depends on how you receive the word of God and especially on how you put it into practice. Let me ask you a few questions. Go on, I'm listening to you. Do you know the word of God? Did you receive it with all your heart? Do you practice the word of God? These are the questions that a true child of God who wants to succeed in life should ask himself. For it is written in the book of Joshua, verse 8, to this that this book of the law does not depart from your mouth, but meditate it day and night, to act faithfully according to all that is written, 
for that is when you will be successful. That's when you'll succeed when you practice God's word, you'll be successful in everything you do, your business will work, and your life will be so balanced. You know, it is written in Psalm verses 1 to 3 this, Happy is the man who does not walk according to the counsel of the wicked, who does not stop at the voices of sinners, and who does not sit in the company of mockers, but who finds pleasure in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on it day and night. It is like a tree planted near a stream that bears fruit in its season, and whose foliage does not wilt. Everything he does succeeds him. Wow! I was not aware of these Bible verses. Colleague, thank you for opening my eyes to all these wonderful Bible verses. It's okay that now you know it. For all these reasons, the Bible says in the book of Hosea 4, 6 that my people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. Okay, I see. There are several factors that make a Christian's life unsuccessful. And what are these factors? We have ignorance of God's word, disobedience to that word, and unbelief. If a child of God does not put God at the center of his life, he will not go anywhere. A lot of people without realizing it. Put the ephemeral things of this world before God in their hearts. Also trivializing a sin that you like to practice by saying that it is a sin cutie can be a barrier to answering a person's prayers. If God forbids something, he knows why and we should obey his words. It is written in the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verses 1 to 2. And this or not the hand of the Lord is not too short to savor his ear too hard to hear. But it is your crimes that separate you from your God and it is your sins that hide his face from you and prevent him from listening to you. I did not know these verses before. If I understand correctly, a real child of God should not have fun with sin, then. It's exactly that colleague. And if you want all of your prayers answered, you need to avoid sin to the fullest. For Proverbs 28 verse 9 says that if someone turns their ears away from listening to the law, their prayer is an abomination. Is there anything left that could block my prayer? There is also the lack of love for one's neighbor. Because God's second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. A Christian should not remain indifferent to the problems of others. That's what you just did when you saw me talking to myself. You came up to me. Your words give me a lot of comfort. Praise God for that. Try to put into practice what I have just told you and you will see that your life will change suddenly. Thanks a lot. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, today, I am making a commitment to be free. Have mercy on me, my God. And please help me to do your will. Help me and I will love you more. God, please reveal yourself to me. It was in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that I prayed. Amen. In the last few months, nothing has been going well in my life. I had lost my job. Soon I won't have a cent left to pay my rent. I have a job interview. Today, I would like to get this job so as not to find myself in a precarious situation. Well, I'm almost at the place of appointment. I think my job seeker has arrived. I'm going to open the door for her. Good morning. What? What are you doing here? I am the owner of this company. Oh good. How did you get here? Because I remember that a few months ago, I was the one who was feed you. You are now completely transformed. What is your secret? My secret? It's Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Tell me everything. Because today, I found myself in the situation that you went through in the past and I would like to know your secret to be able to get out of this situation. Let's sit down. As I told you, if you find me here today, it is really thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Before, I worshipped God like everyone else and had no identity. I did not know the word, nor did I practice it. I was living my life the way I wanted to. And when I first encountered difficulties, that's when I started to pray. But today, I thank God because I understood the steps that should be taken to be able to experience the powerful hand of God in your own life. I am really blown away by the way you speaks. You have completely changed. At some point in my life, I examined myself and let go of almost all the things that could be a blockage, such as my prayers. 
I had taken moments of fasting and prayer and asked the Lord to reveal to me the things that are hidden in my heart that prevent me from getting closer to Him. And through His love, He revealed everything to me and I began to walk at His word. The more I kept His word, the more great things He did in my life. And here I am today. I advise you to give your life to Christ and to keep His word so that you can also see the wonders of the Lord in your life. Your story impressed me a lot, because I knew the pain you had endured in the past. I also pledged to give my life to Christ and to obey His commandments. It was the right decision you had just made in your life. And the Lord Jesus Christ will give you the strength to stay on this path. Thank you so much for your advice. Dear brothers and sisters, we need to know that in Christ we have a new identity. We must accept and walk in the assurance of this identity so that when the enemy looks at us, let him see this assurance in us. Let them see the superiority that God has given us over him. Let us be aware of what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross of Golgotha for us by avoid sin. Because in Christ, we are no longer slaves, but we are free. We experience this freedom by having the revelation of the Word. O oh, Eternal Father, I glorify you so much for all your benefits in our lives. May your name be mightily magnified and glorified forever and ever. It was in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that I prayed. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that's it all for this video. If you liked this video, feel free to like it, comment and share around you so that many souls be saved and restored. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sentinel channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. God bless you.